Hello to all of my friends from near and far. I want to welcome you all to another edition of the National Portrait Gallery Storytime Program called Introducing. In this program, we share the stories of the people who've helped to shape the history of the United States through our portraits. Now, today we are going to be looking at a portrait of pioneer, flight instructor, mechanic, postal service, air mail pilot, World War I Red Cross worker, and architect, Catherine Stinson Otero. Now, Catherine Stinson Otero accomplished so many wonderful things during her life and was even a famous celebrity in the 1910s and 1920s. Now, a very long time ago, women were not really allowed to be pilots and fly airplanes. So what Catherine Stinson Otero did during her lifetime is really cool. So this portrait is black and white. Uh, it's a photograph and is from sometime around 1919. Sadly, we do not know the name of the artist, but we do see a smiling woman um, in front full view. She wears goggles pushed back from her face, which we can see up here, which are resting atop some sort of dark colored hood or cap that she's wearing. Um, her dark colored calf uh, length coat has a substantial fur collar that reaches up to her ear level and a tie around her waist. She poses with her hands in the pockets of her coat. She is also wearing dark colored tights and Mary Jane style shoes. And behind her is an early two seater biplane. Now the woman in this photograph, Catherine Stinson uh, was born in Fort Payne, Alabama on February 14th in 1891. When she was a young woman, she really wanted to study music in order to become a piano teacher. But in order to save up for a trip to Europe to study, she decided to become a stunt pilot which is a lot. <laughs> so after getting her parents' permission, she asked Max Leal of Chicago, who at the time was a really well-known, respected pilot, to be her teacher. Now, it was pretty brave of Katherine Stinson to ask Leal, which was one of the early great pilots. However, when she asked him, he looked at her and said, no. So, Catherine Stinson asked and asked until she was able to persuade him to take her up on one of his planes. And less than a day later, convinced of her talent, she was flying planes by herself. And he agreed to teach her stunt flying. So on January 12th, 1912, Catherine Stinson became the fourth woman American pilot to earn a pilot's license. She would later travel across the United States and dazzle audiences with her stunts at county and state fairs. In 1913, Catherine and her mother Emma founded the Stinson Aviation Company in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which was where the family had their home at the time. Stinson also taught herself increasingly daring tricks up in the air, including the loop the loop. Now the loop the loop happens when a pilot flying a plane makes a complete circle in the air. Now at the time, the loop the loop trick was considered to be very dangerous, but Catherine Stinson Otero was up for the challenge. In a plane that she had built for herself, she became the first woman and the fourth pilot in the United States to master the loop the loop stunt. Now, in 1917, she set a long distance record of flying at 610 miles um, alone from San Diego to San Francisco over the mountains of Southern California. Later, when the United States Postal Service started an air mail service, Stinton Otero became the first woman to be commissioned as a mail pilot. She broke her own flying record while carrying air mail. Um, with a 783 mile flight from Chicago to near New York City. When the United States became involved in World War I and the Army asked for volunteer pilots, Stinson applied, but unfortunately the military rejected her because she was a woman. Even so, she still volunteered her services as an ambulance driver during the war and was accepted. 
After World War I, she decided to live a quieter life and became an architect in New Mexico, where she designed apartments in Santa Fe. Later on, when Stinson was asked about her career, she called herself an ordinary girl, no more courageous, clever, or self-reliant than the average American woman. But she did feel that women would make great pilots because of their patience, attention to detail, caution, and intuition. Now, sadly, we've reached the end of this week's introducing. I hope you enjoyed learning about this really special person as much as I have. Until then, we hope to see you back next Wednesday for a new story.